I'm going to show you how to remove a rear wheel from a Kimco AK550. I'm going to show you what needs to be done first, then I'll cut in when it's done. Well, you want to remove this top and bottom belt cover, the Allen key. Then you want to mark your axle with a Sharpie to where it was lined up at originally, just for starting out. Move your adjustment screws out the way. This is your lock. Move that back with the 12 millimeter. But before you do that, you want to take off your brake caliper with these two bolts, your speed sensor, and take off the cables from this bracket right here. Then when you do that, same thing over here, adjustment screw, you want to break this axle bolt with the 27 millimeter. I'll cut in when I'm done with that. All right, this is where I'm at so far. Took the caliper off. I put a piece of, just like a paint stick between it so it doesn't squeeze down with a rubber band to hold it. Got strapped up right here. Just broke with the 27 millimeter breaker bar. You can see how I push these adjuster screws all the way up. Bracket. This side's loose too. So now I'm gonna bang it with a mallet on the right side a little bit, and then uh, should come right off. And you're gonna push the wheel forward to get this belt off and pull it back. All right, the rear wheel is off. Just be aware that this bracket for the uh, brake caliper will fall off. It's just putting a groove right there with this. And you wanna you wanna get a sharpie or mark it. There you have two spacers for the wheels. This goes on the left side where the belt is, and it goes this way. I just marked it with the arrow, so I would know. Same thing with this. This goes on the right side. And uh, if you get confused, just uh, the two ribs on the spacer goes on the inside. Uh, yep. I'm going to show you how to remove the front wheel from a Kimco AK550. First, I'll take the fender off. These two bolts. This back. Bracket bar here, the reflector. Same thing on this side. These two. All right, after you get the front fender removed, you want to take off the speed sensor. You got your two bolts right here for your caliper. Same on the other side. You want to hang those up. We're going to loosen these screws right here. Then we're going to pull off the axle. It should come out right pretty easy. All right, so this is my setup. Just because I don't have a bike stand, so I had to get kind of creative. It's harder because I'm taking both wheels off at the same time. I just don't feel like waiting. So for this front axle, I have it set on jacks right here with a little pad under there with a the jack. When you take this axle out, you want to pull the bike's right, your left, enough threads out where it's still engaged into the axle and you're going to tap with a hammer to dunk, 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 to pull the axle out on your right side like this and make sure you loosen up those pinch bolts right here with a six millimeter allen and make sure to know what spacers come out that probably doesn't matter but I have them marked so you see the arrow so it's gonna go on the right I'm gonna put it back together same with the left So, yep, I'm gonna get both tires installed in the front and rear, and I'll show you how to install them. All right, I got the new tire installed for the front, the Michelin Pilot Road 4 scooter ver versions. So, it's pretty simple. When you put this axle in, just put get like some grease, put a thin coat on the axle, and on the inside of the wheel, the dust cover or dust seal. Throw some grease on there, put the axle in, tap it as far as go until it's right there. Tighten these pinch bolts first. It says 14, 18 foot pounds, but you can do that by hand. And then uh, for the axle bolt, you want to use blue Loctite. Tighten it down by hand, then you uh, want to get a torque wrench. It's 51, 55. I just did 55 foot pounds, and just make sure you torque it. And the rest is pretty self-explanatory. Just put your brake calipers on, fender, speed sensor. Pretty easy. All right. 
All right, I got the rear wheel back on, same as the front, Michelin, Pilot Road 4s. Uh, it's pretty easy, same as taking it off. You might need a second person to hold this belt for you, keep it out of the way. Make sure you got that sprocket in front of these uh, covers. Um, make sure you put your brake caliper bracket on also, slide into that groove. And you definitely want to put some grease on that axle, just some high-speed red grease on the axle itself, uh, inside the wheel bearing and the dust seal, and on this, on the lip of this uh, spacer also. Same for the right side. Just get everything lined up. Put with your markings. Uh, I put the stop on the left side, just how it came, just how it came off. And then. Uh, once you put your axle on, just put this nut on here, put it hand tight with the socket, just get it hand tight on there to hold everything. And then uh, I'm gonna cut this, I'm gonna explain the adjustment screws. And don't forget to put your caliper on, your brake holder bracket, and your speed sensor. And I forgot to mention, definitely for the front brake, front brake also, calipers, you wanna put Loctite on these uh, brake bolts okay the main issue with doing this by yourself is uh setting the tension correctly on the belt in the service manual you need a thousand plus dollar tool <clears throat> called a sonic tension meter and pretty much all that does is it measures the vibrational frequency when you tap the belt and it gives you a reading that has to be within a certain range um yeah it's kind of ridiculous i doubt any shop in the u.s at least is going to have that tool for this They'll probably just eyeball like I did with the markings or twist it and just call it good. Um, one guy in the forums, Kimco forums, RGS897, <clears throat> he drilled a hole in the bottom of his cover right here, like right on, this em on the edge of this emblem, and measured the deflection with a 10-pound uh, pressure gauge that are used for Harleys. And on a brand new bike, he was getting about 3 8 to 7 16 deflection. You could do that way. Um, another guy I saw on YouTube, he had a Yamaha T-Max. He was using a, uh, a musical tone app, tapping it, trying to get F sharp or F note. And he allegedly verified that with the real meter. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go off my markings that I made before I took it off. And in the service manual, it says on a used belt, it should be about 19.2 millimeters on the adjustment blocks. So that's all I'm gonna do. Uh, it's not gonna be perfect, of course, but with my markings and uh, on my mic micrometer or micrometer, I guess it's a 19.2, and that's for both sides. And I feel like that'd be all right. Like I said, I'm pretty sure it's in the ballpark doing it that way. If you're not comfortable doing that, you can probably take it to the shop if you want. And also, in the service manual, I want you to have a one millimeter gap on both sides of the sprocket for the belt. But no matter what I do, I just can't get it to go in the middle exactly. And even when I bought the bike brand new, it was like that, so like I said, I'm just gonna go with it. Um, should be fine. And uh, after you got your adjustments correct, um, you just want to torque this. In the book, it says uh, it says 88 to 103. I just did 95. Like I said, that's all what you want to do. But yep, that's about the tension. That's about setting the tension. Like I said, you might not like it. I don't like it, but I'm never. I'm not gonna buy the thousand dollar tool. So I think it'll be fine. Give it a test run. See how it goes. But that's how you do the tires on the front and rear of a Kimco.